Hello, everyone. And uh, first, a uh, uh, big thanks to uh, for for Sajia to accept my talk, and I uh, I'm really happy to be here. It's my first time in Singapore, and uh, except the jet lag, I really enjoy it. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. And uh, yeah, I'm working uh, uh, for Capgemini, uh, with Capgemini for uh, four months now. Uh, I will just uh, just introduce myself uh, rapidly, and uh, I'm French. Uh, you could hear my accent. Okay, I like. Uh, eating bread and walking the street with my dog and drinking wine, as usual. I am a big fan of uh, martial arts. I practice martial arts for 25 years now uh, and big fan of Bruce Lee. Uh, it's because of him I, I started uh, to practice martial arts and I'm, uh, I'm continuing right now. Uh, I'm in a free and open source world, free software exactly, uh, for 15 years now. Uh, I contributing, uh, I've been contributing and, uh, in a lot of uh, open source projects. I also uh, in OpenStack, for example, uh, I created the OpenStack f um, French User Association in France, but also in Montreal. Uh, I be a part of the first free software association in France named April. I was VP uh, for years. Uh, I, I, I was lucky. I, ha I talk, uh, for example, I have uh, some talk in the Libre Planet. Uh, the free software event in Boston, and uh, for I spent my last four years in uh, in Canada working for Manulife. I think you know Manulife in Singapore. You also have a Manulife. It's uh, um, it's uh, it's a financial company, uh, particularly on uh, retirement, and uh, mostly on retirement. And uh, for four years now, I'm working with Capgemini. I'm in charge of, uh, I'm working in Toulouse, in the south of France. I'm back to my homeland, and I'm in charge particularly of Airbus. Uh, I help Airbus, but also uh, Thales and some other company you have here, uh, there, to, uh, to work on open, global technical strategy, but particularly open source. Uh, in Cap in, uh, just to let you know, in, uh, in Manulife, I was uh, director of DevOps for the Canadian division. And after I run the global Kubernetes platform uh, worldwide for all the company, and uh, and what's what's it about me? What I, yesterday I heard a lot um, open source one. Personally, uh, um, I never work in open source because I would like to warn. It's like martial art, you know. I never start martial. I, I, I practiced martial art for 25 years, not because I would like to, to win someone, it's because I would like to be better myself, and that's why I, I'm doing open source today. And uh, that's why I'm doing open source for four years. And, uh, and that's really important because, okay, we won, that's it, but we have a huge challenge in front of us. Because we, we're talking about, particularly in a big company, we have different legacy to manage. First, we have the technical legacy. You won, you win today, but anyway, you have to deal with 30 years uh, proprietary solution deploy in company. You have to deal with uh, stuff uh, in production today. You have to manage them. You have maybe you have to work with them for uh, at least uh, the next uh, 10 years. And this is really important when you're talking about a big company, thinking not like I'm a startup, I just start today, I'm going to grab some Kubernetes. No, you have to manage the real fact. You have WebSphere, you have uh, uh, IS4. Uh, IS4500, you have a lot of technology and you're going to have those technology for years. Also, you have a human legacy, you know. Uh, uh, I w I've been used to work with um, uh, with a Linux guy, I'm a Linux guy, and uh, today my team is not a Linux guy. Today my team is Windows guys, it's VMware guys, and that's people used to work in a proper world, used to work with projects already built, we used to work on in a way very different. Also, you have a lot of people from hardware. And you know, when you're talking about microservices to someone uh, used to work on the hardware side, it's, it's a big challenge. And this is really important when you, you would like to deal with particularly big company, you have to think, okay, about everything you said, uh, it's good, and if you know, it's good, but now how you apply that with people they are not maybe sometimes ready to do and to practice uh, in the real life. First, it's about management. You have a lot of waterfall mindset in, in a big company, particularly. Waterfall is not only the way you manage software production or uh, software lifecycle, it's also a way you're managing problem. And uh, for example, in a big company, a uh, project manager, they are, the, they are the master of the class, you know? They decide everything 
uh, and I this is really important to understand. Uh, you have uh, the hierarchy between technical people and non-technical people is really uh, on the advantage of non-technical people in big company. Uh, and because for many reasons, uh, historical reasons, also you have you very they are really sharp or cost saving strategy. For example, when you work with Airbus, Airbus it's a big uh, big big company. Uh, they manage planes all around the world, and they manage their provider as they manage any other provider, you know. And when we're talking about software, when we're talking about IoT, they would like to save cost. They would like to save money. Uh, also, it's uh, the procurement process, the way you acquire software, you acquire services, they are, on a, they are really, uh, they build it on the, on the old-fashioned made, they build it about subscription, they build it about uh, how I'm going to pay for Microsoft and so on. That's why I, I like this uh, Bart uh, sentence, it's really about, okay, uh, you have to convince yourself, it's like your mantra, I would like to do open source on purchase is good for me. I have to do that, but how? And how I'm going to be ready? People are scared today, really. In big company, I think I scare for their job. I scare for their futures. And uh, this is really important to, uh, to help them and uh, to figure it out and to, to find a way to, to resolve. First, we have the good news. Force are mature. Today, when we're talking about those technology, those different stacks, they are not uh, rocket science. At least all of them are here for five years. Even Kubernetes is one of the, uh, of the last, and Spinnaker maybe is the last one. Uh, but for example, when I'm talking to my, this is my, uh, uh, my stack. I'm talking with my clients. You know, I manage when I was in Manulife, Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, in production. Uh, today, I'm, I'm running a Kubernetes and Docker previously with Pivotal Kubernetes, now with OpenShift. Uh, we even have a Vanilla version. On each scenario, we use to today a GitLab, Artifactory, and Jenkins. You know, it's really important to understand the stack are here. Uh, maybe sometimes we have a big misunderstanding about what is continuous delivery and what is continuous integration. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, misunderstand about that. And, uh, and today, uh, we managing, my team is managing the, the infrastructure part. Just look at this uh, picture. Uh, if you look at only uh, one or two years ago, an infrastructure team managed only private and public uh, infrastructure as a service. You could say private or public infrastructure. Today, we have to manage all of them. You know, last, uh, yesterday, you have to manage a VM. Today, you have to manage a continuous delivery platform, a containers platform, and you have to manage and to offer to your client all solutions to deploy the CI. That's a world change of the world. It's everything is changing, and you have to manage that and to, to, to build your skill set on it. And, um, but we have another good news uh, in this world. Communities are strong and really, really strong. Just look at today what we have. We have an event like Forsage, yeah, on the, we could say a, a grand event. Uh, after that, you have uh, Cloud Native Foundation. You have OpenStack Foundation. I think uh, OpenStack really, uh, I, I've been working for long with OpenStack. OpenStack really opened after the Linux Foundation, really opened the new way of managing foundation. Today, you have Cloud Native Foundation. OpenStack Foundation is soon open infrastructure foundation. You have the Linux Foundation, Ju just look at the Linux Foundation, the size of the foundation today, you know? Uh, you, you're going everywhere, you have Linux Foundation somewhere. Uh, Apache, it's the same thing. Apache, uh, sometimes you, you say, just stop to accept project. <laughs> you are too big, you are more project than people, you know, it's, it's a problem. But, but Apache is strong also, and more than that, Apache, it's uh, the way you're managing your, uh, your license, and it's the way you're managing the collaboration. It's, that's really what Apache uh, bring on the table. You also have Eclipse for everything, it's about Java, but you know, uh, for, I don't know if you know, but for the first time, you have a Jakarta uh, just replace the Java to uh, Java EE. And for the first time, uh, Eclipse really managed the new version of the Java uh, runtime. And uh, this is really interesting. I have friends of mine everywhere now. And uh, I, I really uh, didn't expect that only a few years ago. Uh, we, are, we, we do have a foundation. We have a foundation so strong. And first, third, sorry, uh, we have, the business is mature too. Just look at the market today. 
Okay, Red Hat, IBM, okay, don't care about the, the acquisition, but let's look at Red Hat. Look at Archicorp, uh, we, we really good project, really a uh, good way uh, to attack the market. They are mature on not only on the technical side, they are mature on the way they go on the market, on the way they manage the partnership with uh, other vendors, with, with a company like us. GFROG and GitLab, they raised, I think, uh, all of them around $15 million, no, $60 million each of them, dollars last year to uh, grow the company. Uh, GitHub was acquired by Microsoft, Red Hat was acquired by, uh, by, um, by, um, by IBM. And uh, Ashicorp, I think a lot of, a lot of you uh, know Terraform, for example, or other tools like that. It's, it's a huge. And those companies are well. And that's why big over the, the legacy people like VMware, like IBM and so on, try to attract them. And uh, just to be sure. Okay. But now, if you would like to think about big company, if you would like to manage a big company, it's not about Excel documentation, it's not about process. You have to think 24-7. Everything you're doing today is to, you have one objective. I'm going to run that platform 24-7. I don't want no one wake up on Saturday morning at 4 a.m. to fix my platform in production. Never, never, ne no one touch the platform during the weekend, at night, and so on. This is really, we're not Netflix, we're not uh, Twitter, we're not a company like that when we're talking about big company. They are company, they have another job, like Airbus, and they have to manage platform. It's really, okay. it's really, uh, it's really important. When you're thinking uh, DevOps, you know, it's, this loop is really cool. You could put uh, any, many technology on it. But for me, DevOps is production. It's security to go in production. Each time I have the same question, how you manage the difference with non-prod and prod? How you use and you uh, authentify yourself when you're going in prod? Wh which is the master? We, we, which, is, wh which is the team? Which team has the key of the DevOps tooling? This is really, really, uh, really important. I have a quote of... Okay, I just stopped. I think I see something strange. Okay, no? It's okay? I, I would like to, to share with you a quote of the day. You say, okay, it's weird. We're, not, we're, not gonna, we're gonna talk about love today. Uh, with uh, Guillaume Musso, it's a French writer. Okay, uh, you could take just one minute to, to read this one. It's about love. And uh, it's, it's really beautiful, you know? And uh, I like this one. Love is like fire on a rainy day. You've got to spend all your, all your time protecting it, feeding it, tending it, because if you don't, it, uh, if you, if you don't it goes out. Okay, you say, okay, but uh, wh wh what is uh, the link with today? Just replace love by POC, proof of concept. It's exactly what is it. Uh, POC is like love, it's wonderful, okay? Everything is about POC, you have everything, but in the real life, no. What lasts in the pain that comes after POC? Just look at, you have to feed your POC, you have to, uh, to, take, to take care of it, and you, you, you know after your POC uh, is going to be a nightmare. You know, everything is okay, the client is happy, you have a POC, everything is okay, the best people just say, okay, we deliver the POC, we could go in another project. Uh, no, no, you, you don't get it. You have to stay, and we're going to run it together. If you're not ready to run with me at 4 a.m. on Saturday morning, this is not a project. This, you're just playing a game with your computer, and it's cool. But if you like to go uh, further, you really need to, need to, uh, to, to thinking about that. With in 15 years, I saw many projects fail, particularly in open source. I think OpenStack uh, is a good example uh, because I saw many, many OpenStack projects fail. But why? First, let's do it myself from scratch. Everything is the same. You have a guy, he's clever, he's smart, he's the best guy you have. He would like to do from scratch. You know, he would like to do, to take the code, to go upstream, and that's it, he deploy it. He is, he is or she, by the way, uh, the only guys in the world could do 
or rebuild what is done, you know? No reverse engineering here. Only one engineer do that, does that, you know, or did that. First, secondly, oh, it's open source, let's do cheap. Okay, we're going to save money. We're going to go directly, we're going to go build a POC, and we're going to do that really lean, lean management. Meaning, okay, I, I'm going to give you less money than I gave to m Microsoft before. That's my plan. And after that, okay, uh, guys, we have a POC. We don't have any more any skill set about how managing the POC. Let's move this POC in production. Okay, you have a POC with no money, only one guy lead it, and you're going to go in production. After that, when you, you it's it's real life example. <laughs> I have, it's in any big company, it's always, when you talk about people, yeah, but about oh, how you're going to manage it in run, or how you're going to move, even on the build to move to the prod, to uh, the POC to prod. People say, oh, people will learn by themselves. If you're going to go, oh, uh, Kubernetes, you go to kubernetes.io, it's okay. If you have all the documentation, let's take the guys, you say you have three weeks to, to train them, and you go online, and that's it. And you're going to have expert after three weeks of learning online, you know? And or you say, okay, let's go certify them uh, online, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. Another thing I saw, and I saw really, it's no documentation. And I don't know how many of you really document what they, uh, what they do every day, you know? Really, uh, it's, it's about, and w particularly when you are in the POC, you're running on time, you have a constraint, uh, sometimes there are consultants come only for the POC and they, are, they stay only one week, and you have to deal with that. And most of them, they, they really forgot. The N1 support. The guy is going gonna, is gonna to talk the call at the first line. If that's exactly what is 24-7. It's you have a guy, he likes fishing uh, during the weekend, he likes doing any, many things in his, uh, in his or her life, and his job is only his job. Okay? But he's the one, every weekend, ramp up if they have any issue. And you have to manage your documentation, you have to manage your process for him or her. Not for the high-level high guys, not for the claimers, the smarter, could go anywhere, can do anything. That's the big difference you have in open source community compared to a big company. In open source community, you have all, of, all the people are smart. You know, oh, we are smart, or look at my demo, look at myself. Okay, but in the big company, we can pay only smart people. <laughs> you know, and how many of you like documentation, and how many of you are okay to do 24-7? front office support, okay? After you finish your POC, how many of you are, are ready to, to say, okay, this is my job, I'm gonna get this in production, and I'm sure because I'm good guys, I, do, I, uh, I did my job well. You know, most of them, they just finish, that, that was exciting, and they're gonna go in a new technology, in a new area, let's do, let's do uh, IA, 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 let's do another thing. That's why, to finish on this, first, you build a pack, not a stack. Uh, we really don't care about technology because this is not, open source is not about technology, it's about the capabilities to change and to improve your technology. You build a pack, a real big pack. And, uh, and why? Because what you would like to do is to have a team ready, uh, ready to, to, to attack, ready to, to manage a project. First, I never, go in a, in a company, in big company, without an editor. Red Hat, it could be Pivotal, it could be any uh, JFrog, it could be first build, work with an editor, a a, be sure you have uh, the good subscription and you're going to be supported by the editor. It's not your job to upgrade Linux. It's not your job to upgrade Artifactory and to be sure you don't have backdoor. I just heard a question before about how we manage Docker uh, security? No, it's going to be managed by itself. No, no, Docker, no, Docker is not managing security at all. It's your process, it's the tooling you had. Today, uh, if this, is, this is one of the big weakness uh, of Docker. It's you, you have uh, trouble to manage it in production. But if you're working with, for example, OpenShift with Red Hat, or with Bullpark or source to image you could have a support from Red Hat to to hardening your, uh, your Docker images. Uh, you never go, uh, please, on Docker Hub 
and put it in production. Never. Okay? <laughs> Docker Hub, it's only to, to, to play with your laptop. You have contribution back. I have five minutes. Contribution back is, is really hard for big company, not only about the legal and the process. It's, all, it's also because most of the time you just integrate. You just have a configuration in your work on the technology. You're not going to contribute. You have people, for example, they could contribute because they're uh, their activity or Twitter or Facebook. But when you are Airbus, it's really hard because your main goal is to build plane. It's not to build software. If you go on defense in space, one of the area of Airbus, they are an editor and they manage software. They could contribute. But most of the big part of Airbus, for example, they, they're not going to contribute. You understand about my POC into production? Really important, train new people. Don't think they're going to learn by themselves. It's, for, it's false. The reality is you have to put them in a real training session, uh, like a lifelong institute. For example, you could go with, if you go with an editor, it's, that's really help you. You're going to have a tra official training from an editor. Also put expert on the table. Uh, expert, they're going to help and they're going to accelerate the process. Documentation, obviously and thinking only about 24-7. Uh, if you have 24-7 support in your mind, you're going to see it's going to be really easy. I'm, I'm finished with this slide. And you have also to help yourself and your team. One of the big parts, I'm talking particularly about infrastructure, the big part of DevOps, when I was director of DevOps, even today when I, when I help my client, is to onboard people and to onboard projects. But you know, I, I remember first my uh, own call activity was in the uh, in in infrastructure side. Now I have to onboard people on the DevOps pipeline. I created, I think after that, we're going to have a talk about DevOps pipeline. You create your DevOps pipeline, it's great. Now you have to onboard them. You have to have someone give some advices, technical assessment, just to say, okay, you have to do that. I'm going to create your GitLab. Uh, you're going to create a Jenkins, and after everything is going to run, and I'm going to document that, and, and after I'm going to support uh, your company. It's really important because you understand about the pack. Human. Uh, advices come first. You have technology behind. Technology is 100% automated, but you need advices. You need a front line of people, not rocket science people. Just take care about your clients and take care about the project. I would like to share this picture because, uh, as I said, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky because uh, last, uh, last year I was in Seattle. In, uh, on his grave, and uh, I take this picture. I just realized this day uh, uh, he died uh, before I was born, <laughs> and uh, he died uh, younger than me now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, his influence is uh, big, particularly in, uh, in martial art. Thank you. Okay, we have plenty of time for questions, and with a bit of okay. luck, the bouncy mic will turn itself on. The fullness of time. No bouncy mic. Hang on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Gotta work this time. All right. Was that deliberate? <laughs> um, okay, so um, I, uh, I, I, I work in a similar field. Um, I also try to help uh, companies uh, see, uh, see the light uh, with <laughs> DevOps. Uh, but uh, the, the, the way I, I've, I've been in two types of projects, right? One is where DevOps is, uh, comes in as, as, as a mega project, right? Uh, with a team of consultants and uh, everything gets, gets transformed, training, everything full package and leave. And another type of project where DevOps is, is, is done gradually in a, in, in a step by step uh, we're dealing with specific problems that they face immediately and, and showing them a tool that solves their immediate problem and let them see that uh, that this works and builds up confidence uh, and then go on to the next phase but the the, the problem with the, with the second uh, with this way of doing it is that it becomes very uh, very organic right uh, they're not using for the most part best practices it works but it may but it's not big uh, best practices the the first one uh, best practices 
but then is often not sustainable. Yeah. So I'm wondering where, if you s approach it in these two ways and how you found the balance. It, it's, it's really uh, what I, I think my feeling is uh, and how we do that. Just to explain, in, when I, I was in my new life, I, have to, I had two teams. One team was a platform team. They were working really on the engineering stuff. They were internal team. And I only had f seven people there. They, are my they were my smart guys, you know. And, uh, and on this side, I built pi platform Kubernetes, but also pipeline. And the big part of my, uh, my, my team after that, 30 people, were only delivery people. And their focus is really apply and try to apply the best practice uh, and welcome the project to see onboarding them and try to apply and to work with them. But it's really, um, it's really easy when you're talking about containers, when you're talking about microservices. For example, in my previous company, we worked on, uh, on, on Pivotal Cloud Foundry for everything net new and on Kubernetes to move the legacy uh, on, some, on con containerized the legacy. But I say when is, when is net new, it's more a cultural ch change, a new way of working, particularly for the developers. When it's legacy, it's sometimes it's about technical issue also. That's why it's the only solution I had is build p DevOps pipeline first, standardize the way you're implementing and you connect the, the tools together, and after work, just onboard the project. And you don't have one, uh, in fact, one recipe. You have recipes, and, uh, and, and you try to, to help them to converge on the same on the same way to, to, to work DevOps. But uh, I had an example about uh, um, uh, IIX uh, technology uh, created in the 90s, and we, we deploy it with, um, with DevOps tooling, GitLab, Jenkins, and um, Artifactory, but we deploy, deployed it, it really on the simplest way you could. Is not we, the idea is we don't we don't want to challenge the people we don't want to automate, but when you go on the net new like microservices no you have to as you say you have to go fast, and you have to move and to give them quickly uh, a, a good solution. By the way, guys from legacy they used to wait. <laughs> you know, when you work with startup they they would like to go fast, but people from legacy they used to wait and they know what's a if you're talking about a six-month project, they're not going to be scared. Uh, if you say that to a, <laughs> to a, a, a small company, they're going to be scared. You know. But uh, yeah. All right. Uh, many thanks. Uh, round of applause, please.